What's up, YouTube? What's up, world? It's your boy, Maki Mark, back with another video. And today on the vlog, we're actually going to be talking still about a virgin island. So today, what we're going to be doing is discussing a video where a tourist came down to visit the Virgin Islands. And she went on TikTok and gave a video expressing of her dislikes. What a terrible time she had while she was down here on vacation. So... What we're going to be doing, in case you haven't seen that video yet, I'm going to be playing it for you um, right now. And after I play it in its entirety, we're going to be addressing the things that she mentioned on the video one by one. So without any further ado, we're going to first have that intro drop. And we'll be right back with you. VI to the world, 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 world. gentlemen we are back um i know you've been waiting on watching the video some of you guys may have actually seen the video already but getting right into it i'll go ahead and explain once again uh this is going to be a review of the video in which the girl did a review of her stay while here on the island of saint thomas um she gave it a bad review in the video you will hear her give it a rating a three out of ten and actually in the comments down below she did say after thinking about it she actually gives the whole trip a zero um so you could tell that's how bad it was so i'm gonna go ahead and play the video right now and then i am going to actually comment or give a commentary and a review of the things she said one by one or the things she stated in the video one by one all right, so let's go ahead and watch the video. Yeah, I'm really trying to find the right words to really, like, describe St. Thomas right now, but I can't. All I can tell y'all is from touchdown to leaving, the vibes were bad. Everybody had attitudes. Nobody wanted to do their job and help. The locals were overcharging like crazy. When I say y'all, they charged by the head. I spent damn near $500 to go to dead ends. They literally charged us like $40, $50 per person just to go like 20 minutes away. And they knew they was taxing. And my thing is, y'all taxing us because we not from here. And then on top of that, we get to where we trying to go and there's no vibes. And y'all charging us the same price to go back to where we came from. So that was red flag in itself because it was like, all right, whatever. I'm spending mad bread and I'm literally getting nowhere. I'm not even having fun. I'm not eating good because we asking where the good food at. Everything we ate was trash. Yes, we ate off the resort. Margaritaville food, ass. Um, they kept messing up the order, giving attitude. It was very, like, rude on the resort, especially the woman. Um discriminating you know they like we were just bringing vibes everywhere we went and it was like they either was bothered by it or you had you know the few people who was like oh okay let me join y'all because this is really like the only fun that's here word um what else we went out to nightlife dead when i tell you there's nobody outside they excuse was oh they only come out on the weekends all right whatever i guess so, yeah, the clubs were just terrible. I mean, the music was okay. But, you know, I really don't care for people to be, you know, popping out. Because we kind of bring the vibes. But even when we was bringing the vibes, they, like, you know, calm it down. Like, why y'all hating so much? Like, what's going on? We spending money. We here to have a good time. We not from here. Why is everybody on this island unhappy? But you know what? I can see why nothing gives. We did jet skiing. You know, we was going to go to the next island. I forgot if it was St. John's. But, you know, a few, uh, a few um, tourists told us, like, it's not worth it. You're doing the same thing on the beach there that you're basically doing over at Cokie Beach. You know? Yeah, it might be some shopping to do. But at this point, I spent $500 in taxi. You think I want to shop? They out here trying to sell fake designer. Do I look like I want to I wanna buy that? I'm here to have a good time. Where is the culture on this island? Like, what's up with y'all? And 
And, uh, you know, even the locals pretty much told us, like, look, it's really nothing to do here, you know. This is why we don't even stay here. They basically told us they go and travel. And honestly, I gave that shit a 3 out of 10. I really wanted to give it a 0. Like, just bad. All right. So, as you can see, uh, she was not happy with her trip down here to the Virgin Islands. And uh, beginning with the food, um, I'm going by the list that she had on the video itself. Um, the first thing she listed and said is there was no good food. Now this, I would give, um, I would say, it. Would, I don't know the places she went to eat except for the one she mentioned, which was Wendy's. And, um, I guess they went to Wendy's after having to spend all that money on taxi. Um, to begin with, <clears throat> um, so I'll be getting to taxi a little bit later. But I, in all honesty, I think that whole trip went south mainly because of her experience with a taxi and getting around. Um, so I'll get into my recommendations on that earlier. Actually, actually, I'll start it first because she doesn't have it mentioned in the list of things. But that was the first thing she mentioned in the video. So in talking about taxi, in most of my videos, you would always hear me ask, if you have the gusto, if you're not scared to drive down here, I would always recommend first and foremost that you actually do rent a vehicle. In the video, the young lady did mention that she spent over $500 in taxi alone and it can get very expensive. That's one of the things I mentioned, things to know before you come visit us in the VI. Catching taxi could become very expensive. I work between the two major islands, St. Thomas and St. Croix. Whenever I go to St. Croix, um, you guys who don't live in St. Croix may not know this. There's only a couple miles between Sunny Isles where I work and the airport. And every time I get charged $20 one each way. So that's come up to $40 in that little couple miles um, between Sunny Isles and the airport once again. So taxi here on the islands are very expensive. As I say, hopefully you are staying on the bus line, AKA the um, Safari Dollar Bus Run Line. And you'd only have to pay a dollar, if at the most, two dollars and getting to where you have to go. The only downside is they basically run between like 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. After that, then you most likely would have to get a taxi fare. Hopefully, um, you could even check some of the drivers that I have listed in, in my description, which I will be listing down below. You could check some of those taxi drivers and call them to get a fare or even deal with you for the whole time. If you're coming on island for four days, Make sure that's a taxi driver that takes you to and from the destinations you're going. And most of the time, if you are going to be using them to and from your destinations that you will be going and getting to, they would cut you a deal, cut you a slack since you'll be hiring them basically um, during the time that you are here. Okay. So that is one of my recommendations that I would give and would have given to the young lady to make her whole experience here a lot better. Okay. Um, moving on to the, the deal with the food, as I mentioned, she only mentioned two places where she ate at, which was at the hotel. She was staying at the Margaritaville Hotel out there on the eastern end of the island. She said the food sucked, for lack, lack of a better term. And um, she also mentioned eating at Wendy's. Did they have anything on the menu? I would tell you, as being a Virgin Islander, Wendy's like never have so... I feel her 100% on what she said. Like, why is Wendy's even open? Sometimes I go there for breakfast. And I'm like, the croissant sandwich. Oh, we don't have any croissants. So they got to give me it on a regular biscuit. I don't want that. So a lot of times I've driven off from out of, out of the drive-thru at Wendy's itself. Um, because they don't have what they have on the menu. And, and it really is frustrating. Why don't you have, why are you even open if you don't have half of what you stay on the menu? Everything that I ask you for, okay, can I have this? Oh, no, we don't have that. We don't have that. We don't have that. So why are you open? So that brings me back to the fact of the one of the main things that she talked about, and I've spoken about that on my video as well previously. Customer service is basically non-existent in the island. For the time I moved back to the islands in 2010, I was, I've been saying and put out in one of my videos, I put out a suggestion for somebody to open up a company to teach people how to do customer service here. We are a service-based, service-driven, service-oriented service um, uh, business, businesses down here. That, that's tourism. You know what I mean? That's our livelihood. 
people need to know how to act and even hold, hold in whatever you feel or whatever. You understand? Um, I'll give an example. One of my friends called me the other day to say that his daughter was coming in here with her mother and her family. And he asked me if I could take the family around to meet her grandmother, her grandfather, and so forth, take them to the beaches, let them see the sights and so forth, take them around and see the sights. They were coming in on a cruise ship. I went down to Krong Bedak to pick up the family. I met with them, coordinated with them, everything like that. Met the girl, walked into um, my friend's van because my car could only hold five people, which included myself, would uh, only let me hold four people. And it was six of them who were coming. So I need another vehicle that could hold all of them. I borrowed my friend's vehicle, which is a regular passenger van. It's not a taxi van or anything of that sort. This guy goes stop me at the dock and go, and, well, first he approached them, asking them basically, oh, um, do, would you guys like a taxi today to take you guys around? And then they said, no, we already have it covered. And he proceeded to ask me, who am I and where am I taking them? I told him, this is my family. Because basically it's this, the, the guy who asked me to take them was my friend who called me the day before to ask me to take his family them around. So basically that's what I did as a favor. And the guy actually threatened to call police and all kind of nonsense. You understand? Now me, I held back. I held reserve. I was just going to wait and to see how far this guy was going to escalate it. Thankfully, a fellow taxi man or taxi friend of his say, man, let a man go. Let, let a man go. Let a man go. You know what I'm saying? But I would have been, he would have been famous. As a matter of fact, y'all would have been hearing about him and watching a video about him on this video tonight, so if he had persisted. Because, once again, attitude. Attitude. You ask me a question. I told you this is family that I'm taking. I'm not stealing any fare from anybody. This is family that I'm taking on a tour of the islands. They came in on the cruise ship. I came to pick them up and I go and drop them right back after I take them around and take them to the to meet their family and so forth on the island. That's how I said. I didn't even need to give them that information. The man going on as if he's police or something like that. Just because the, the family was technically, they were from South America and so forth. You know what I'm saying? They live in, in the United States, but they're fairer skinned than I was. And oh, the, the young girl was the only one who looked mixed or anybody of color. So he assumed I come in on the, 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 the what you call it, the dock, trying to steal somebody fair or whatever. I, I explained to him all the courtesy. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to tell him Jack. You understand? I was there. I ain't in no taxi van. Wait, where's your paperwork? Where's your documentation? I don't need any documentation. I came to pick up family and that's what I was doing. And that's what I did. You understand? So as I said, a lot of people here have a real bad attitude. The attitude stink. Both male and female, I would say that and be and totally honest with you. As she said, to sum it up, she said, just a whole bunch of people walking around with, a, with an accent and attitude. And that's true. That's how sometimes that I feel it to be. And we have a long way to go in terms of that. We really need to fix that. That's something that honestly needs to be dealt with here in the Virgin Islands. It's so sad that I have to come to this. A woman's video going viral talking of her experience here, right here in the Virgin Islands. I mean, what is it going to take again? More and more and more people coming out and saying that. And because of that, people are seeing this worldwide now. People get, get to go online and express how they feel. And because of that, people, people are going to stop coming here. Why would someone want to come to an island which is described as just a lot of people with accents and attitude? Come on now. We got to do better. We honestly got to do better. Um, so moving on from there, um, the lady said, well, I was talking about the food. Um, hopefully anyone, before they come to any place at all, go to any place to visit, I'll always suggest doing your research. Um, if you do research on the Virgin Islands, even looking at my videos, I have two videos that talk about where to eat and what to do when you come to the Virgin Islands. I'll put the link in the description and also put, um, two tags up here on the top of the video. So you can watch both videos and get those and get those suggestions that my friends locals gave for where you can go and what to eat there. Of course, I wouldn't recommend you go to any place that I wouldn't want to go to. You understand? So these are recommendations for some of my friends on where to go and what to do when you come to the virtual. So I'll definitely tell you, do your research before you come to the virtual Islands and watch my videos. Uh, for ideas on what to do when you do come down here. I do have several videos just on that topic itself. Um, so in doing so, you would also have some fun excursions as well, which the, the, the girl mentioned, there were no fun excursions. Now, granted, the Virgin Islands has basically some of the same excursions 
that you would get almost anywhere you go. Like if you go to uh, another island over St. Martin across the waters there, they have basically the same excursions. Uh, but you can watch one of my videos again. I'll put the descriptions up above of uh, uh, the top 10 things to do. I'll also put a links. I haven't done a top 10 things over on St. Croix as yet, but I'm going to be about to do a video like that, telling you the top 10 things to do on St. Croix as well. Um, but do your research, watch the videos to get a basic or general idea of what to do when you come down to the Virgin Islands, which will make your, your I mean, anywhere you go, as I say, um, which will make your experience at that place, at that destination, 10 times better than it would be if you just show up and ask somebody, oh, where should I go and so forth. Um, she said that the clubs were trash. And um, she did mention that the excuse was that things only be popping at the clubs on the weekend. And that is true. Um, since going through, once again, we are small islands. St. Thomas alone is only 32 square mile um, island. And they don't have much stuff to do. The clubs generally do open on the weekends, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You will really find things popping then. And only if it's like carnival or something like that, you'll see, have a long list of things to do on each night at the clubs. Um, so I would ask you or ask people to bear with us in that regard, because since COVID, you have to remember, we had to deal with two Category 5 hurricanes um, not more than five years ago. And after that, COVID hit not even three years. We were just getting on our feet again, and we were hit with COVID worldwide. Everybody know what we had to deal with, with that. So that really hit like the clubbing and entertainment industry really hard. Um, a lot of people went away. A lot of people have moved away. So the, when you would get, uh, like, let's say the DJs who you'd usually get and stuff like that are not available anymore and so forth. And they take jobs doing a lot of other functions as well. So in that regards, I could understand what she said, but it, it would be correct also in what the locals told her that stuff really be popping mainly on the weekends. Now, we are starting to pick back up, of course, and um, you can go on certain, I guess, website, if you want, like Facebook and so forth, to the events page and so forth. I think probably we should get like one page up and going where everybody posts what's going on each weekend and so forth. Another thing I don't like about the VI, which would work well to do, it'll be good to have a community calendar that not only locals, but tourists can go on and, as well and see what's going on, see what's happening. Um, because a lot of times in the Virgin Islands, like for some reason, everybody plans to have stuff or events on the same weekend. So the rest three weekends, they don't even have nothing much to do. So I think it'll be good if we could start, I probably might even look into creating one myself and everybody could go ahead and list the events that you guys are having on that um, particular uh, channel or website, excuse me, not particular channel, but particular website and so forth. Everybody, as I say, travelers, um, guests or locals alike could go on there and have an event or community calendar where you basically know what's going on. For right now, you do have Facebook, but not everybody's on Facebook. So as I said, everybody, most people do have access to internet. And I'll say nine out of 10 people, and you could go on there and find out about events going on, whether it's the local clubs or separate events that are taking place. Um, so she said Margaritaville deserves a two-star rating. I wasn't there. I haven't even been to Margaritaville. Um, hopefully that's something that they could bring up. As I mentioned, customer service is you know what I mean? As I said, one of the things where we need to move up on in our rating, we need to do better in that. So she had a bad experience there on the premise itself, even when going eating and so forth. And I guess generally asking anyone for help at Margaritaville. The one that really hit me is no culture on the island. And yeah, that one hit me real hard. I was having a talk with somebody the other day, which I said, man, culture really going away for real on the islands. When I went over, you may have seen my video when I went to the ad fair on St. Croix, I went into the little um, makeshift shop that they had there and I saw marbles and stuff like that. I thought to myself, man, these young people around here, like sixth grade, not even sixth grade, ninth grade and dumb. Matter of fact, I'll say even 12th grade and dumb. I know 12th grader was, wouldn't be into that, but you go ask any 12th grader how you play a marble game. They wouldn't be able to tell you that. And it sucks because I remember growing up in, in junior high and I mean, from elementary especially, 
You know what I mean? When it was marble season and them kind of thing, man, any little patch of dirt that we saw, bam, marble game going on. I would even call it talking about Steely, Biggie Bum, all them kind of thing, marble names and stuff about calling. And my friend was like, man, I know when last I heard a word called in my life. So locals would know what I'm talking about. Girls jumping double dutch or Chinese jump rope, all that stuff. Can we get something going talking to people in the historical society, probably on every other like weekend or something like that in the Emancipation Garden over on St. Thomas and over on the Emancipation over on, on Frederick Stead by Frederick Stead Pair, where we could have locals come out and have them once again different vendors and so forth and then have games, have book reading, storytellings, something like that to revitalize our culture and so forth. And even people showing people how to tie, you, you're gonna see it tying the headdress and different things, quadrille dancing, stuff like that. Something to revitalize our culture right here in the Virgin Islands. There needs to be an awakening and a revival of sorts, honestly, right here in the Virgin Islands, cause it's dying. We have a brain drain, which, which she also mentioned, she was told most people just moving away. There's a brain drain there and we losing our culture. We actually are losing our culture. I could say that honestly. And that's why I come on this video today to talk about and share because that's something that's near and dear to my heart. I don't want to see us lose our culture and so forth and tell stories and so forth. Too many of our youth are getting involved in crime and all this other nonsense and the, the youth man them don't even want to listen to you when you come and talk to them and, and so forth. So we are losing our culture. We are losing our history. We are losing, I think, the essence of what makes us Virgin Islanders. So I'm making a call. I'm making a call out to Virgin Islanders who live here and who live abroad. We got to do better and we got to do something. Come, let's come together and let's do better, honestly. Um, let's see. <laughs> she did mention the thing about Wendy's needed to shut down because they didn't have anything on the menu and they got upset when they asked them, well, what is there to eat? You know what I mean? Once again, attitude, accents and attitude. That's a sad thing. That's a sad tagline. You know what I'm saying? Basically, what she said. She she summed up everything, her experience being on St. Thomas as accents and attitude. Everybody with an accent and an attitude. Just people with an accent and an attitude. Is that what we want to be known for? No, we don't want to be known for that. We want to be known as having a rich culture, a rich history, a rich personality, and everything like that. And we shouldn't have it where anybody leave any of these Virgin Islands and have to have a bad review, just as this young lady said. So, as I said, I gave some of my, my ideas out there. Me, take them and run with them. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Once it, it makes us, makes for a better Virgin Islands, at the end of the day, that's what we should be pushing for. And we shouldn't have, as I said, anybody coming and sharing a bad review of these U.S. Virgin Islands. All right. So this has been the end of my spiel. Um, hopefully we could take some of these ideas. Hopefully some of the higher ups could hear it. Take it up and run with it. Uh, feel free to reach out to, to me. You can reach out to me at info at the highlight co dot com. That's highlight spelled T H E H Y G H L Y T E C O dot com. All right. That's info at the highlight co dot com. Um, I'll put the links and everything in the description below. And that's the way you can contact me if you want to reach out to me and you want us to. To, to get together and work on doing something, as I said, for the betterment of our people, for the betterment of these Virgin Islands, let's do it. All right. Um, this is Marky Mark signing out, saying be sure to leave your mark on the world. And as always, VI to the world, 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 world.